Welcome to Paradise Valley Chalet. I'm John, and we're on a mission to teach cutting-edge technologies for a modern lifestyle. Today we're installing the Sandin Hot Water System. And we've got curbside delivery of the Sandin Hot Water System. The Sandin System has two major components, a stainless steel storage tank and a heat pump. One of the nice things about the system is you can choose to install the tank inside or outside. There's a variety of ways you can choose to configure the system and various ways to place the two components. We've chosen to install the tank on the lower level of the chalet and mount the heat pump on L brackets on the side of the building. So first, we're mounting these 500 pound rated Diversitec Quick Sling L brackets on the side of the building. These brackets can be mounted on concrete, wood, or other surfaces. Using half inch bolts and washers on both sides, we're securing the brackets to the building. On center to on center is 22.91 inches. So we're square, level, and now we're going to place the heat pump on those brackets. And here's the sandin, about 108 pounds. Not that heavy of a lift, but you can't tip it, so you pick it up, square, and place it. So on the bolts going into the building, and on the bolts locking the sandin to the L brackets, we have anti-vibration padding and anti-vibration washers. So with this mounting system, the unit has been stabilized on the side of the building for long-term operation. So we drilled two one and a half inch holes and that's going to facilitate our plumbing along with the heat tape and the insulation. What we're going to do next is work on the electrical. Sandin states that the system should be installed by qualified electrical and plumbing contractors. Now we did work with electrical and plumbing contractors on this project and this project has been installed to code and it has been permitted. Okay, here on this electric panel, we've installed two breakers. Now one of them is this two pole 15 amp breaker. Now that's a single breaker, but it's two pole. And we leave it off until we're all done. We don't turn it on now, but we've got it wired in. And we also have this 20 amp breaker. That's for the heat tape. So the 15 amp is gonna go all the way to the heat pump. And the 20 amp is gonna go into the building to a GFCI for the heat tape. So we come out of the bottom of the junction box into some half inch conduit and run it all the way over to the heat pump where we have a flex hose into an electrical box on the back of the heat pump. So we've installed our breakers and we've run our wires. All we have to do now is hook up the wiring on the heat pump. Normally, you would install an electrical disconnect right next to the heat pump. But since our panel was within eyesight of the heat pump, we chose to go directly from the panel to the heat pump. The two wires on the left are power, and the wire on the right is your ground. Coming directly from my two-pole breaker on the panel, I landed white at position one and black at position two. So we're all wired in. We'll come back and power it on later. Okay, on our plumbing, for some of it we're going to be using 3 quarter inch, and for some of it we're going to be using half inch. But all plumbing between the heat pump and the storage tank has to be half inch. Whatever your layout is, and however you decide to run your plumbing and position your components, it helps to make even a crude diagram, so that you can estimate the amount of plumbing that you're going to need to buy whether it's PEX, copper, how many elbows, how many T's. So once you get that all sorted out, you can purchase your materials, lay it out in advance, make sure you got what you need. Okay, I put some Teflon tape on this hot return. This is where we're starting. Now you may or may not need Teflon tape. Uh, in some cases, we use Teflon tape. In some cases, we use Teflon tape and pipe dope. So just know that if you run into problems with your plumbing, you have those options. And as I said, we are using push fittings for the install. The first one is threaded, but thereafter, it will be push fittings all the way into the storage tank. 
I do my calculations, make my cuts, and do a test fitting before I lock them down. Now you can get a Tektite or Sharkbite deburring and depth gauge tool and it'll round off the edges of your cuts and it'll also mark the insertion length. The insertion length is about an inch give or take depending on the pipe size so you'll want to calculate that in when you cut your plumbing. So we've got our cold supply and our hot return looking nice and we just popped through into the building. Now we're going to work on installing our heat tape. Okay, so we've strap tied heat tape to the plumbing and we want to keep that heat tape touching all the way along the plumbing and cranking down those strap ties on each stick of plumbing and each joint. So you'll notice we've got it around the end of that cold supply and tight everywhere else. After the heat tape was installed, we fill up the holes that go into the building with insulation. Then we drilled the hole for our thermistor cable. That's coming in right next to the plumbing. We finally make it out into the machine room. Everything that we ran from the outdoors all terminates here. We've got our hot and cold half inch plumbing that runs to and from the heat pump. We've got our heat tape on that plumbing. And we've got the thermistor cable. Let's follow the full path of the thermistor cable. We come into the building, we run the cable down, then we open up the sensor well. Inside, we insert the black and white wires. It doesn't matter which hole they go into. Just tighten them down with a screwdriver and you're good to go. Okay, it's pretty simple. If you're standing square facing the unit, the cold water in and the hot water out is on the left side. The PTR valve is in the middle. And then your plumbing to and from the heat pump is on the right side. And you remember the plumbing to and from the heat pump has to be half inch. But for the rest of it we went with three quarter inch. So all the plumbing and fittings you see here on the left side are three quarter inch. And we're coming from our main around the back of the storage tank and into this cold water inlet. And I added a T with a valve here. That has nothing to do with the sanding system. I installed it in case I want to divert the water elsewhere. And at that cold water inlet, we're teeing up to a mixing valve. So your cold water is going to go to one side of the mixing valve, and your hot water coming from the storage tank is going to go to the other side of the mixing valve. The mixing valve allows us to set a preferred hot water temperature, which then flows out to our hot water system in the building. And in the middle we have the PTR valve which terminates out to an adjacent drain. On the right side of the tank we've got cold water going to the heat pump on the bottom and hot water returning from the heat pump on the top. And we added a drain because this is the lowest point in the system. So if we want to all we have to do is open this valve and we can completely drain the entire system. Is hook up a hose and run it out to your drain. For example, we wanted to make some plumbing adjustments, so we drained the system, made the adjustments, and refilled it. And that's it. You got your hot and cold on the left side, your pressure relief valve in the middle, and your hot and cold to and from the heat pump on the right side. So we're done with the plumbing, and we're ready to power this system on. Okay, now you remember we don't turn on the electricity until the whole system is filled with water. So first, you open the water main and you fill the system. As soon as you open your water main, you open your PTR valve until a little bit of water discharges from the PTR valve. As soon as it does, you close the PTR valve and open the hot faucets in the entire building. Once they all run clear, you close all the hot faucets. Then we head outside to the heat pump, and there's two valves on the heat pump that need to be opened. That lets us purge the air from the rest of the system. Once they run clear, we shut them down. Next, we power on the heat pump. As soon as we do, we open all the hot faucets again for three minutes. This is going to purge any final air that's in the system out. So after those three minutes, 
You shut those hot water faucets off and the system is up and running and the system should be functioning at this point. On this hot water return from the heat pump, we currently have hot water. I can touch it and it's warm. So the system is functioning and we've got hot water throughout the building. Now that we have hot water in the tank, we're going to set the mixing valve. I can feel hot water here, but to set the valve, we have to draw hot water from the tank. So we open our hot faucets again and proceed to setting the mixing valve. The first thing you do is unscrew the valve cap. Once it's unscrewed, you pull it out. This heat sensitive sticker comes with the mixing valve. Once we get it on there, the combination of the hot and cold mixed is what we'll see here. Right now I'm at 116. Come over here, crank it up a little. And now we're at 118. So we'll come back, bump it up a little. And now we're at our target of 120. And at 120, we're hotter than we were with our last system, even when our last system was cranked up way beyond its center position. So this system is performing well. And of course, this is a safe setting at 120. We could also divert hotter water to different parts of the chalet for various purposes. Now that the system is running, let's check out the sound of the sandin. Now it is whisper quiet, but most of the time the heat pump is off and it only turns on when the hot water in the storage tank is drawn down. So we've been watching the system for a few days and there's no leaks in the system. This one and one fourth insulation will account for the plumbing, strap ties, and heat tape. And we'll install it from the heat pump to where the plumbing enters the building. And just in time for winter, the Sandin performed outstanding throughout the winter season. And moving into the new year, we're sure enjoying our new Sandin hot water system. Now that we have the Sandin on site, it's become part of our educational programs here at Paradise Valley Chalet. So feel free to stop by and check out the system in person. 